Hi, I'm Mark King, Investment Editor at Columbia Threadneedle Investments. Joining me today is Mark Burgess, Deputy Global Chief Investment Officer and Chief Investment Officer at EMEA. And we're going to discuss some of the key themes driving markets. These include the recent political turmoil in Italy, the outlook for credit and emerging markets. Mark, let's start with Italy, which has recently seen this political lurch to the populist right, and that created some volatility in financial markets. What's your take on Italy right now? Well, I think it's just a reminder that Italian politics are volatile and the Eurozone still has some challenges. Um, specifically, the populist coalition were looking to introduce uh, a fairly Eurosceptic finance minister, sort of left field, out of the blue, um, who was opposed to uh, the Eurozone and the EU more broadly, and this clearly was a bit of a shock to markets. If we think Brexit's a big deal for, for Europe, uh, Italy would be a gargantuan experience uh, and a pretty big negative one. Specifically, it would place a lot of pressure on the financial system. Um, the thought of uh, a newly formed Italian lira devaluing against the euro would potentially destabilise the European banking sector. So that was a real concern for markets and, as I say, came out of the blue. Unsurprisingly, we saw European financials, specifically the banks, both credit and equity perform poorly in response to that, but thankfully we had the interjection of the Italian president and we've seen a more Euro-friendly finance minister put in place and things have calmed down. But it's just a reminder that you know there are still risks out there and uh, as I say, Italy has the ability to interject some volatility because of the fragility of its own political system. And is the outlook still positive across Europe? Because it looks as though we're seeing a slightly more helpful currency dynamic of late. Yes, it is. Um, but it's important to note that there's been a couple of changes. So firstly, we've seen, in terms of the companies we've been meeting, management's beginning to just you know, introduce a bit of caution about the, what the strength, the strength of the euros uh, meant for their ability to export. Um, the euro's been quite strong. And you know, many of the, uh, of the world's leading exporters are quoted in Europe. And the prospects have deteriorated a bit because, as I said, the euro has been a bit of a headwind. In addition to that, you may recall we've spoken in the past about how strong the eurozone economy has been. We had a uh, pretty synchronised growth across the region. The leading indicators showing very, very robust expansion. And at the margin, that's reined in a bit. And, and probably that isn't a surprise because the strength of the growth was, was very significant and was probably unsustainable. So a bit of currency headwind and a bit of slowing in the growth has meant that that the prospects for, for European profits have probably come back a bit. Um, uh, expectations came back with that. So I think we're still okay. Um, Italy is a bit of a concern because that could take confidence down, which might slow growth even further from here. But uh, as it stands today, um, you know, the major economies are growing nicely. Unemployment is falling. Profit growth is coming through. And we think we're set fair with the caveat that we wouldn't want to see Italy you know, blow up any further from here because that, that would undermine confidence. Yeah, moving across to fixed income now, Mark, what is your outlook for credit? Well, it's the same as it's been for a while, which is fundamentals are pretty strong. Clearly, that strong corporate profits growth that we've been seeing, not just in Europe, but globally, is a very positive backdrop for, for um, credit, uh, particularly uh, you know, investment grade. And uh, as a result of that, and in, in conjunction with low yields we've seen from core government bond markets, we've seen spreads coming quite a long way. So from a valuation perspective, I think the, 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 the asset class looks less attractive. Also, strength of corporate profits and the maturity of the cycle have led to quite an uptick in, in merger and acquisitions activity. So companies gearing themselves up, taking on debt to buy other companies, which is great for equity, but it's not so great for credit. So as a result of that, we've been taking our exposure both to investment grade and to high yield, Dan, closer to more neutral against benchmarks. OK, now we'll move to the US, Mark. The domestic economy there appears reasonably strong against this backdrop of rising fiscal spend. But with QT and interest rate rises on the cards at some point, how positive are you on the region? Well, the, the macro data coming out of the US is incredibly supportive. And unsurprisingly, given how well the economy was doing even before the fiscal uh, measures introduced, the tax reform increased spending is really stoking a fire that's already pretty hot. And so we've seen very strong jobs data come through, both in terms of falling unemployment, job creation, but also the participation rate moving in the right direction. So the US economy is very, very strong. Um, the, the introduction of those fiscal measures is, is likely to increase both the budget deficit and the current account deficit. And history would suggest that that would undermine the dollar. So um, if we see that trend continue, I would expect to see the dollar's recent strength reverse a bit. And that is probably a good thing for, for global markets, is they generally don't like a strong dollar. 
and it's difficult, of course, to predict future dollar movements, but we do know that the dollar exerts a huge influence on emerging markets. So what does the future hold for EM? The most direct response would be that emerging markets generally don't perform well when the dollar is strong. Uh, historically, it's placed pressure on countries which have got big current account deficits and need overseas funding to help them to fund their, 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 their deficits and also to support spending. With some exceptions, we've seen a strong improvement in the economic fundamentals of much of the emerging market economies, much less dependent on external financing, much less dollar sensitive. So uh, the dollar's strength has been less of a, of a feature as it's been going up. I would expect it to be less of a feature as it falls, but it will help. Uh, perception would still be that the emerging market economies benefit from a falling dollar. Um, if you look at valuations, it's the spread pickup you get in the EM debt and the PE discount you see in emerging market equities would suggest that this is actually quite a good time to be invested in the emerging markets, particularly given how strong the global economy continues to be. Okay, Mark, thanks very much. <laughs>